שלום everyone. The Gemara in Baba Metziah in, in, in several pages is discussing the issue of Tsar Baalei Chaim, causing animals pain, uh, is it allowed, is it not allowed, and what, what do we do with it? And the truth is that it's a really complicated issue because there's nowhere in the Torah that explicitly says that it's not, it's not allowed to hurt animals. But even though in our in Baba Mitzia, in a few place, places and other in other masachtot, we hear that tsar ba'alechaim causing animals pain is isur deoraita. It's forbidden from the Torah. So there are different verses, different psukim that different chachamim are saying this is a pasuk that proves that tsar ba'alechaim is forbidden from the Torah. Some say um, it's from the story of Bilam hitting his aton. Uh, because the, the the angel is rebuking him for for hitting it, some say that you that that the in Sefer Dvarim, you know, where we we are um, directed to give water both to the people and to and to the animals. But the truth is that according uh, uh, amongst the the Rishonim, um, there is a machloket whether it is really from the Torah, is it really the Oraita, or is it just you know, it, or is it just as if it is the oraita and it's not a real uh, isur and a real love, a, a real love and, and, and not and something we, we were not allowed to do from the Torah. Um, another point that I think it's important to mention in this in this discussion is the fact that the beginning of creation, what Bereshit is telling us is that God created the world and gave us fruit, vegetables, everything that grows for you and for the animals to eat. And it's only after the mabul that we are allowed, we, are, we, have, we get a, a special permission to eat, to eat meat, to eat animals, but not the blood. In other words, we have to be very careful about how we shocked in the, the animal and, ha, and, and, not, and, and removing the blood, not, not eating the blood. And I think it all comes from the, same, from the same root, which we'll discuss in a minute. I'll just remind you, and you can look it up. I think there is an English uh, in Safaria that Rav Kook, Rav Avraham, eh, eh, Avraham eh, Kook, um, is, eh, um, is, there's a whole um, essay that he wrote about the fact that there's there's a connection bet be between being a vegetarian, not eating not eating meat, and peace in the world. You can go check that out. And I am sharing my sources. And let's see. Okay. So Baba Metzia in in few pages. Um, um, 32, 33, and we'll see in a minute also, also for uh, 85 and, and in other places. Uh, the Gemara says, you know, that the Tanaim learned that um, the, require, the, the requirement to prevent suffering to animals is by a Torah law. Okay? Uh, uh, and the different psukim that Chachamim are bringing in order to prove that it's either you know, psukim that we already discussed in Arma Sechet and also uh, and also in Baba Kama, when you see the ass of your enemy lying under uh, its burden and would refrain from raising it, you must nevertheless raise it with him, okay? Because you're causing pain not only to your to your enemy, but also to the chamor and the donkey and the ass, are, they don't need to suffer from your relationship with that person. And another pasuk in Sefer Dvarim, you shall not muse, uh, muzzle an ox while it is uh, uh, threshing, okay? In other words, don't cause more work and more pain for it, for the uh, for the ox while it's working. And as I mentioned, some also say, and it's the Rambam, for example, it comes from Bil'am, um, and the messengers of God said to Bil'am, why have you bitten your ass these three times, it is I who came out uh, as an adversary for the for their errand in your ob not not an obnoxious and is obnoxious to me. Okay, in other words, if there is a rebuke by the messenger by the angel of God to Bilam, why did you have to hit your your ass three times? You know, it means that the Torah doesn't like us to do that. Doesn't like us to hurt animals for no good reason. 
There's another, there's, there's another famous story that comes in Baba Metzia in page 85, a very famous story about Rabbi Yehuda Levi, uh, 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 sorry, about Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, again, the editor of the Mishnah. And Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, we know that he suffered from uh, a lot of illness and the doctor sent him up to Tzipori to, uh, to have a fresh air. Up, up there on the mountains and the Gemara in, 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 in page 85 is asking, why was he uh, suffering so much? And the answer the Gemara is giving is, is an amazing one. There's, the Gemara is telling us a story that one day Rabbi Yudha Anasi was walking, was walking down the street and he saw um, uh, a group of, of, uh, of, of agalim, of, uh, of baby cows uh, on their way to... Um, uh, uh, to be to be slaughtered, to be slaughtered, and one of them, one of the one of these baby calves, um, you know, ran to to get out of the uh, of the group and ran under the coat of Rabbi Yudan and Rabbi Yudan was was sending him and saying, go 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 as you were created for this purpose, and it was said in heaven since he was no compassion towards the cow, let. Uh, let afflictions come upon him. So it's amazing. It's midah keneged midah. Marabi didn't show compassion over the calf, even though he knew this is what he was supposed to go to, but he didn't show any mercy, any compassion. Therefore, he's going to have those sufferings. And the Gemara continues to say that what happened that they were removed from him, it it happened when he one time in his house um, and the 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 um, the pain left him due to another incident. One day, the maid servant of Rabbi uh, uh, was sweeping the house, and there were young weasels uh, lying about. And she was in the process of sweeping them out. And Rabbi Udan, as he said to her, "Let them be, as it is written: the Lord is good to all, and His mercies are all are over all His works." And they said in heaven, since he was compassionate, we shall we shall be uh, compassionate on him. And uh, and he was removed over uh, from his uh, from his miseries. So we see that the Gemara brings a story to make a point about even on a calf that is clearly needed to go be slaughtered for you know for food, there should be compassion uh, compassion upon him. There's another famous midrash. I'm sure you know it's been told about about David Melech and Yaakov Avinu and Moshe. They were all shepherds, and the Midrash in Shmot Rabbi is saying our teachers have have said uh, once while Moshe was uh, Moshe, our teacher was tending his father-in-law Yitro's sheep. Uh, one of the sheep ran away, and Moshe ran after it until it reached a small shaded place. There, the lamb came across the pool and began to drink. As Moses approached the lamb, he said, I did not know you were. You ran away because you were thirsty. You are so exhausted. He then put the lamb on his shoulders and carried him back. And the Holy One said, um, since you tend the sheep of you, since you tend the sheep of human beings with such overwhelming love, be your life, I swear you shall be the shepherds of my sheep Israel. My sheep Israel. In other words, the, the attitude of Moshe Rabbeinu, the mercy, the compassion that he had over the lamb in, that was tired and, and small. Um, God is saying, this is, the, this is the leader that I need for people. If you're good towards animals, you are, you are, you'll be good towards people. Unfortunately, we know in Jewish history that there were people in the Second World War and the Holocaust, um, Nazis that were good to animals or not good to people. But in Amisla, it's it's the opposite. The fact that Moshe could, could show so much compassion towards a, a living creature who is not a human being, God said, this is the leader that I want. And indeed, when we come to the reasons of Tzar Baal Chaim, whether it's the writer literally or whether it's just an, uh, a direction that the Torah wants us to go to go uh, um, uh, with, uh, Maimonides, for example, in the Guides of the per Perplex, is saying in regard of, of what we re read from Bil'am, there is a there is a rule laid down by our sages that it is directly prohibited in the law 
to cause pain to an animal. And it's based on the words, wherefore hast you smitten the, uh, thine ass? Okay, what the pasuk that we read about the bil'am. But the object of this rule, again, why is it, why is it forbidden? The object of this rule is to make us perfect, that we should not assume cruel, uh, uh, assume cruel habits, and that we should not usually cause pain, uh, uh, uselessly cause pain to others, that on the contrary, we should be prepared to show pity and mercy to all living creatures, except when, we necess when, when ne necessity demands the contrary. When we shall long to eat flesh, again, it's, it, when we need to eat, but even when it says that when we need to eat flesh, we should not kill the animal in, when, it's, when it's allowed to eat, to eat um, um, flesh. We should not kill animals for the purpose of practicing cruelty for, uh, or for the purpose of play. Okay, this is forbidden only when it's necessary. Otherwise, we should keep away from hurting uh, and killing animals for no good reason. And Sefer Chinuch is saying similar thing. It has been said uh, it, uh, as to the reason for Shechita from the neck and with a checked knife that we not cause more pain to an animal than is necessary because the Torah allowed people to eat animals and to use them for all his needs, but not to pain them for no reason. And the sages have already spoken out at length about the prohibition of harming animals in Baba Metzia and in Shabbat on the question of whether it is forbidden from the Torah. And they conclude that apparently it is a Torah prohibition. Okay, it's not clearly, but apparently it is a Torah prohibition. And in terms of not uh, um, using an animal uh, at, at the time of its work, says the Chinuch, it is from the roots of the commandment that it is to, it is to teach ourselves that our souls be as a, a good soul that chooses what is right and clinging to it and pursues kindness and mercy. And in our uh, uh, and, and in our accustoming uh, uh, it to this, even with animals that were only created to serve us to be concerned for them and to distribute them portion of the toil of their flesh, the soul will be taking for itself um, the way for this habit. And to do good to people and to, and to guard from taking access away uh, from them for anything that is appropriate for them and to, rep and to repay their reward according to all of the good that they do and to state them with that upon which they toiled. And it is fitting for the holy chosen nation to follow this way, okay? We need to, we need to teach ourselves mercy and kindness and, and, and pursue that and do as, and get away as, as far away as we can from anything which is not appropriate for the chosen, from the chosen nation. Um, in Shulchan Aruch, uh, in Evan Ezel, the Ramah is making a, a remark and he's saying anything needed for the healing or other reason, there is no prohibition of causing pain to animals. And therefore it is permitted to pluck the feathers of wild geese uh, and there is no uh, potential uh, and, and there is no potential problem of causing pain to animals. Nevertheless, says the Rama, the world withholds from it because of its cruelty. There are things that are for, uh, permitted, but they are acts of cruelty. And even though they're permitted, we need to keep away from those things that can really harden our souls and harden our behavior. And I brought two psukim from Tanakh that I, I believe are, are echoing that, um, uh, that request from us to not to be cruel. One from Proverbs in Mishlei, a righteous man knows the needs of his beast, but the compassion of the wicked is cruelty. Okay, and in other words, if you wanna tell the difference between a righteous person and a cruel person, see how they treat their animals and you will know. And the last pasuk in Tehillim Kuf Mem Hei, 145, as we know, it's Ashrei. In 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 the uh, there are different verses in Ashrei 
that really teaches us to, to have compassion like God has compassion on its entire creation. And the psukim say, Hashem is good to all and his mercy is upon all his work. And the eye of all look to you expectant, uh, expectantly and you give them their food when it is due. You give it uh, open-handedly, feeding every creature to its heart's content. And as God is acting like this with all his creature, we as well should follow the footsteps of God and be mercy upon all all uh, all all creatures in the world um and limit to a minimum suffering that we need that we cause uh animals and this is a good learning for people who want to practice being being um uh, merciful and kind um don't forget also the animals around us <laughs>